The opisticlyph snakes kill their prey by squeezing them. But first, they bite their victim for a long time. The poisonous glands are connected to their fangs, and the poison trickles into the wound, reducing the prey's agony and saving the snake some work. As the poison enters the body, it starts to decompose the prey's organs. During the slow and difficult swallowing process, increasing amounts of enzymes leak into the prey's body to make digestion a process as light as possible. Something as easy as drinking becomes a complicated exercise for some animals. Nevertheless, water is essential. The size of the giraffe's long neck is an advantage when it feeds on the leaves from the highest branches of the acacia trees. Nevertheless, this becomes a great handicap when they try to soothe their parched and interminably long throats. Having such a long neck forces them to make great efforts in sucking and pumping water to their stomachs, which, moreover, are a couple of meters higher than their mouths. This is why they're constantly raising their heads. It's quite difficult for giraffes to reach the water, and their necks function like a huge straw. Although this is a well-conceived concept, it wasn't the giraffe's idea. The idea comes from the insect world. Butterflies created one of the most refined feeding methods, the straw. Perhaps they got bored chewing soft leaves when they were at their larval stage and decided to feed only through their hollow and fine proboscis. Nevertheless, this means that they have to take all the nutrients that their bodies need in liquid form. This is why you will often find large groups of butterflies near puddles and riverbanks trying to absorb the mineral salts dissolved in water. The show of color and movement generated over those wet areas attracts more and more butterflies and soon you have a beauty pageant unrivaled in nature. Many of these are short-lived puddles, and it's impossible to know when there will be another open bar again serving these essential mineral salts. Lepidoptera mostly feed on sugars from flower nectar. The tongue of this butterfly is brushing around the bottom of each flower to reach the sweet delicacy. Eating at this restaurant is like playing the lottery. Other hungry insects may have stopped by previously and the flowers could be dry. However, the butterfly's long sucking straw finds food in places that other insects were unable to reach. When you have to suck in, there are many ways of achieving this. For example, this is a sucking turtle. The strange mata-mata is carnivorous like most other turtles. But it doesn't have jaws, or a beak, or teeth. Its mouth is like a mailbox, even if it doesn't look like one. And that's precisely the trick. This Amazon turtle is an undercover expert. Nobody knows exactly where its head is, 
or if those fleshy mounds on its body are algae or branches. When necessary, it knows how to keep still and pretend to be part of the vegetation on the riverbed. In one of its raids, the Matamata -mata turtle has found an unwary school of cardinal tetrafish. Its strange appearance is a perfect camouflage, and its slow movements take it closer and closer to the unwary fish. Once the turtle crosses the enemy's line, there's no mercy. The turtle is a vacuum cleaner, and there are the crumbs. When the turtle is close enough to the fish, it just opens its mouth and generates an inflow. Its sucking power is so strong that fish cannot escape the current. Everything happens so fast that the group is caught unaware. The turtle sucks in a lot of water along with the fish, but before swallowing its victims, it lets the water out by just barely separating its lips. The Matamata -mata turtle's amazing aspirating system is unbeatable, especially for eating raw fish. Sushi. Although experts assert that nothing beats chopsticks if you want to eat real sushi, newcomers may find it difficult to make the right movement to bring the desired morsel to their mouths. Our gourmet would do well to look underwater and take a lesson from the professionals. Shrimps and crabs are born with chopsticks attached to their hands. They have an innate ability enabling them to grab the tiniest morsels with their pincers. The underwater world is full of specialists. This crab has changed two of its pincers and has turned them into skimmers that filter whatever the generous ocean provides. It feeds on the plankton found in the rich ocean currents. It can catch the smallest piece of food in its net just by being at the right place and straining the water to obtain its food. When the crab feels something touching its screen, it draws its net inwards towards its mouth. Its movements are so mechanical that it often resembles a weird toy. But the flapping required to reach its food makes it vulnerable to the dangers lurking in the reef. That's why this strange crab usually lives in the poisonous and stinging tentacles of certain anemones. They weren't just swept by the current and happily coincided in this privileged location. Instead, the crustacean, acting in its own interest, placed itself atop the anemone to seek protection from other predators. Because of its shell, which protects it from the stinging tentacles, the crab is free to eat at its leisure. Many species feed by straining water or sand. They're called filtering animals. The flow of the ocean feeds these strange animals. All they have to do is filter the essence from the water to obtain their daily helpings. For these animals, the strainer is an extremely practical invention. For us, it's a refined idea for the genteel habit of ending an excellent meal with a good cup of coffee. Skim the milk, please. We've noticed with some astonishment that we share dietary habits and utensils with other animals. When it comes to table manners, many things had been patented in the animal world. Unfortunately, to satisfy hunger and our quest for luxury, the most pompous culture in the world, our culture, 
has altered our environment so much that we are seriously endangering it.